Hello, Tim here, and in this video, I'm going to road test a Nano Mister. Um, normally, I use a traditional sort of Mister spray bottle, uh, but I find the the water droplets sometimes they're a little bit too when they hit the surface of the paper, they're a little bit too large, and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to control it, and water sort of goes all over the place. So I did a a, a Google. Um, a Google search of fine misters and came up with nano misters which are used in the uh, beauty industry and um, for eyelash, uh, false eyelash, um, um, uh, for false eyelashes. So beauticians are, are well aware of this nano mister and basically it is, it's got a USB port there and uh, it's, it's like a mechanical mister really but it's a finer spray than the traditional sort. Um, as I say, the traditional sort, it sort of, you spray it with a sort of pump action there and uh, yeah, you get very varying results. But I thought uh, with a fine mister like this one, um, worth a go. So I, the, the, if you do a search on Amazon or eBay or wherever you buy stuff online, you'll, you'll see hundreds of these different nano misters. This one was about seven or eight quid or 10 US dollars at current exchange rates. And um, yeah, so it's a mechanical one, but a very fine spray. And you just, on this particular model, you slide down this little slider here to, rev to reveal where, where it sprays out from. And uh, you get a very sort of fine spray. Um, so here we go. The scene I'm using for this Nano Mister test drive is uh, this harbour scene in Ilfracombe in the UK. This is North Devon, and quite a simple scene. I, I chose this because of the reflections in this um, in the wet sand here on the uh, on the surface. So. An opportunity to try out this mister just to see how it performs um, either keeping the paper wet or wetting paper that had dried that had dried up too much to do a sort of wetting wet or wet on wet um, approach so this is Ilfracombe a simple harbour scene a backdrop of buildings around the harbour edge a few boats. I think uh, this is one of my own photographs. I think this from a composition point of view is fine. It's got these two boats either side, um, some distant boats as well. Nice lines across the harbour surface, um, rigging and these chains and little um, little sort of channels in the harbour bed um, that sort of lead your eye into the scene which I think which I think is quite nice so I'll, I'll go with that. It's a dull day uh, not much light to play with I think I have to make the the background quite dark um, introduce some light with the two yachts either side uh, we've got some nice fenders as well a bit of contrast there to the the colour of the hull of the boat and yeah, good good chance to try out the mister on the the harbour bed here, um, on in this area here, and on the the right hand side. So lots of soft edges, um, and uh, just just a very soft reflection uh, to the boats on this on this dull day. So let's get started. The paper I'm using for this demo is Saunders Woodford, cold press, 300 grams in weight, uh, 140 pounds, and it's 15 inches by 11 inches, secure with some masking tape. And I'm using a 3B pencil just to get in the main outlines of the key objects in the scene two yachts, the background buildings, maybe some details on the yachts. 
Now, to keep in view uh, the reference photo I'm using, if you open up another tab on your browser and then just copy the uh, YouTube video ID, um, just, just copy the URL into that other tab and then just pause it on that, uh, pause it on the, the photograph, then you can keep going back to it for reference purposes um, as, as, you, as and when you want to. So back to the drawing. As I say, just getting in the main shapes here of the hull, not too much detail, picking up on the outline of the key shapes and perhaps a little bit of cross hatching where I need to go darker like the, the cabin entrance on the first yacht. There's the mast and the, the sail that's been wrapped up. Background buildings. Go around the, the back of the harbour. Just really a simple um, skyline of all the, the, the roof, the, the rooftops there. Not a continuous line, just introduce a few little variations. Um, peaks and troughs of the rooftops and then the harbour wall at the back of the harbour and now yacht number two I thought they because of the way they're pointing in towards each other it looked quite nice from a composition point of view I did take loads of photographs um, that day it was a winter's day in Ilfracombe. Um, took loads of photographs, but to be honest with you, most of them are not very suitable for painting. They, they, if I was trying to copy the yachts, they're not too well placed, or they're pointing in different directions, or it had too much on one side and it was sort of out of balance. Um, but this one, this one was sort of all right. Uh, right hand edge, just get in the keels of the boats. They're sort of supporting these boats on the on the harbour bed. After drawing in with pencil the outline quite softly, I might go in a little bit harder. Just in ca just in case I I paint over um, too heavily with the uh, the background colours, and I then obliterate what I've done. So I want to try and just go over again some of those faint lines to make them a little bit stronger so I can see them through the, the wash. So that's the initial drawing done, the main shapes, making sure it looks right from a composition point of view. The drawing has to be um, as good as I can do it before I go on to the next stage doing the initial wash. And as I normally do, start off with the sky. I'm using a mop brush here to cover over large areas as quickly as I can not spending too much time on the sky, keeping it fairly light in value. I start off with a bit of yellow ochre on the right hand side just to uh, make it a little bit more interesting so it's not too um, monochrome in colour. And then going a little bit darker on the left hand side, I've just picked up whatever was in the palette. At this stage I'm just covering up the most of the paper except for those areas that I want to preserve to be lighter or are going to be still white um, at the end. So I'm carefully painting around these uh, boat shapes and cover up pretty much everything else. The sky won't be 
done again. I will be going over the background buildings again. So this color can be almost anything. It's going to be, I, I will go over that with a second layer. So I have to be careful painting around these shapes. And that's why it's important to have a brush that's got a good edge and maybe a good point to it. So you can be a little bit more precise going, going up to the pencil lines of these, uh, of these shapes and the yachts. Now down to the harbour bed. Um, so it's a lot warmer in colour. The sky is cool, a cool blue. Yeah, I've got a little bit of yellow oak in, in there, but essentially it's cool. The background, I want that to be fairly cool as well. But the harbour bed, let's have that quite warm. So alloys and crimson there, burnt sienna, a little bit of light red. And as I'm going across the scene, alternating with different different thicknesses of paint and different colours. Again, like the sky, I don't want it to be too monochrome. I want to mix it up and just paint in different directions there with the brush. Keeping the brush fairly moist. It's getting a bit dry there now. Did you see that? It was the, the hairs were beginning to splay out. So I need to replenish it and get a bit of extra water. Um, on the brush. Now down in the corners I'll go a little bit darker. That top palette there I reserved that for mixing darks. Um, right at the top there on my palette I've got neutral tint and burnt umber so I often pick that up to mix in some some darker values. Now at this stage so it's the whole object of this painting is for me to try out this newly purchased Nano Mister. I could, this wash now, I could let this dry a little bit and while it's still moist or certainly um, while it's still quite damp, I could go in with a thicker, darker colour to produce those soft reflections in the harbour bed. But I deliberately don't want to. I'm trying to test this, this new mister, this fine mister. And uh, I'm going to let this dry out 100% before I re-wet the paper with the mister to give it a go. Now, while the um, wash here of the harbour bed is still damp. I'm lifting out. So I'm lifting out with a, a brush, a dry brush. I'm using a paper towel here to take off the moisture and with a good edge on the same brush I'm using very carefully I can create some lines which will, these little channels in the harbour bed, they, they're leading the eye into the scene. So they're quite nice from a, a composition point of view. The wash is going to go lighter. Um, it may appear quite dark now. It's going to go quite a lot lighter. And as it dries as well, I, I, these lines here, um, they won't be so noticeable in the uh, end painting. Just keep lifting things out. Take the moisture off the brush. You see, I added a little bit of blue, a little bit of, little bit of cerulean blue in the middle of this scene. I just thought it needed, uh, again, something a little bit different, maybe a reflection of the sky a tiny bit. But as it dries, it will become less noticeable. It's all going to go a lot lighter. If I move the brush slower as I'm lifting off, it will have a chance to soak up more of the paint. 
Whereas if I did it quite quickly, not so much would, would come out of the wash. That's a little channel I spotted. And a lot of these marks, they've got quite soft edges to them. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this as the, as the paint is still quite, quite damp. Now I don't want to overdo this lifting up. So I'm now using a hairdryer to uh, speed up the drying process. I've just spotted, uh, maybe a little bit of light underneath the hull of that boat just to give me you can see I was doing doing a little bit of cross hatching on the shadow underneath the, the hull of that boat so just reminding myself um, that's going to be quite dark under there so uh, a bit of contrast even though it's a dull day we can get in um, a little bit of contrast between light areas and dark areas uh, the the fenders on the left hand boat underneath the hull on the right hand boat that little boat right in the middle almost in the middle um, quite light against a darker background so they're all little things that we can introduce to make it a little bit more interesting add in a range of values even though it's a dull day Now, the paper is drying quite nicely. It does go flat as well. I don't, I don't um, stretch my paper or pre-wet it. Uh, it's, um, you know, it does buckle a little bit, which I don't mind. Uh, but this, that drying process there, it will now be completely flat. So I've got a nice uh, smooth surface to, to work with again. So next step of the, is the painting of the background buildings. I'm using a slightly smaller mop brush. This is a natural hairbrush from Jackson's. So the first, first brush I was using was a Raphael mop brush with uh, synthetic hairs. I find that's quite good for doing that initial wash. Um, very affordable, very nice brush. Behaves a little bit like um, a natural squirrel mop, but this one's a pure squirrel mop brush from, from Jackson's. It's got, uh, I've had it a few weeks. It's still got a fairly good point to it. Um, you do eventually lose the point with what I was doing there, you know, giving a little bit of abuse um, on the palette, uh, particularly if the paint is a little bit dry. Um, it will eventually lose that lovely point and edge, but I've still got it on this one. As I say, simple background. To provide a little bit of contrast to the lighter, the, the tops of the um, boats. Now I'm actually here painting the walls of these houses, not the rooftops, are going to go in a little bit darker with those rooftops, but just a, a, a quite a, a brief painting across, like the harbour bed, which you can see now has gone quite quite a lot lighter. Um, like the harbour bed, I'm just alternating some of the colours and strengths of the colours, so I've got a range of values in there. The bottom of the harbour wall, I'm going to have dark. So rooftops will be dark, bottom of the harbour wall is dark. And you can see it's blending in quite nicely. Um, don't want too many hard edges in those, in those background buildings. 
so it's this darker color thicker color is now I've got a slight slope on my board but this darker color is going against gravity going up into the walls of those buildings I've got to be a bit careful here to paint around the yacht that will be a bit of a hard edge there between the background buildings and the top of the boat there's my little boat in the distance I don't really have to be too precise with the painting of that boat it's, it's too far away to for anyone to know what kind of boat it is it's just a, a very simple shape I'm holding the brush now almost like a pen or a pencil just to get a bit more control now for the rooftops trying to follow the pencil lines I drew in and that of course is is uh, where well, it's still quite damp up there at the top um, on the walls so they're blending in quite well to each other doesn't matter if I leave a few gaps here and there this is a, a loose style of painting where you're being quite brief with your description of different elements and and your painting style and uh, it doesn't matter if you have some imperfections with broken lines the rooftops not being horizontal little gaps left as well bleeding going on between two different colors I know the in my source photo a lot of the buildings were brightly colored in the background um, pinks yellows but that would just detract it would from a value point of view I think it would bring that would be the focal point and I want the, I want the interest to be these two yachts so I want to keep the background quite neutral it's just as the word suggests it's a background it's way over there in the distance we don't want it to be too important in the overall scheme of things Well, I've got this brush, I will add in a few lines now on the harbour bed. And trying to emphasise the convergence of these diagonal lines that will help the viewer into the scene. So this is just the top of the first left hand boat. Not too not too dark. And while I've got this colour do the same for the right hand yacht the bottom of the hull on the the second boat I need a bit of a sort of graded wash there gradually gets quite dark underneath the hull so I started with a fairly light colour and then dark underneath it's going to blend in connect just a little bit with that curve just connect a little bit to the harbour wall on the right hand side but straight away hope 
hopefully we've we've got a little bit of contrast creeping into into the scene with um, particularly that boat on the right with the back of the boat being quite bright against the the darker background now the left hand boat is a sort of dark blue and navy blue so uh, mixing up there a bit of ultramarine blue primarily and a bit of burnt sienna This is the tricky bit, the back of this boat, trying to follow the, um, the lines that I drew in initially, that sort of semi-circle of the back of the boat. A bit tricky to do that when I can't, <laughs> because I'm right-handed, um, trying to see what I'm actually doing. I guess you could sort of turn the paper upside down and just... Uh, um, you better see exactly what, what you're doing there. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do this because uh, of the filming. It's fairly stationary. Painted around the three fenders, and then there's a white line going up the middle of the hull, which might be a little bit too bright now, so I can always glaze over that in the end if I think it's... Uh, too bright. This is, after all, a dull day. It probably isn't true white. The color of that white, uh, the color of that line. Uh, so I might um, dull it down a little bit after everything's dry. Now the rest of the hull, a little bit easier. Now I can see what I'm doing. Continue on to the bottom, mixing up more of my navy blue colour, which I don't want to run out of that because I do need to, after the hull, I do need, do need to go down with the uh, darker keels. So there's a, a rudder or something at the back of the boat. Of course, it has to be a rudder. Um, and then these darker shapes supporting the boat as it's resting there. This right hand one needs to be a bit lighter, a bit bluer. So I've just uh, picked up a bit of cerulean blue being a lighter color. Down to the down to the harbour floor. back of the boat is a little bit too dark it is catching it's on a slight angle and it is catching a bit of light so I do need to lift out a little bit of that color that dark color it's all still quite damp so quite easy to do this and try again it's quite tricky because I'm right-handed can't really see what I'm doing. Can't uh, I can't go right over the top of it because the camera that's filming this video is right um, above the middle of the picture. But that's it. Now with a paper towel, just to make things a little bit more interesting, I can lift off some of the moist paint. So I've crunched up a paper towel. If I do want uh, more of a control to this lifting process, I might just make a little bit of a fold or a, 
um, around a around a sort of lump to the um, the paper towel just to be a little bit more controlled in that lifting. So again, drying everything before I go on to the next stage. It does help speed up the process. I want the the holes here to be um, super dry before I use the mister. So it's time now to try out this new nano mister, this fine spray. And there we are, just spraying it down. Being a fine spray, so I'm, I'm painting obviously indoors. I think if I was painting outdoors, I might revert to my normal pump spray water bottle that I've got, but this is quite a fine spray. It would just blow away if I was outdoors. So it's really fine. And this is the very first time I've tried it. I haven't um, used it before. So I'm just feeling my way. And I don't really know what kind of distance from the paper I should be doing this. It's about, I guess, uh, a, a few inches or um, about 10 centimeters above the surface. Probably, probably if there's any beauticians watching this, they might know exactly the range to use for a nanomister for it to be effective. As I say, I think it's mainly used in for beauticians working with eyelashes. I don't, I don't know exactly what it does, but um, I just thought it'd be a good idea to try it with watercolor. So the surface has been the surface would dry. It's now been wetted with the mister. I'm just testing it there with my fingertips and do a little test with some paint, which is fairly thick. Going up to the hull where the reflection is darker and then it comes lighter coming towards us and the edges are softer. Now there are some hard edges there, so I think I'm gonna have to use the mister again. Yeah. Over on the right hand side. I think this mister would also be really useful if you've you've got some wet paper or you've laid down a, a wet wash and you want to keep things moist rather than as I've done things were dry and then I'm wetting the paper again. Might also be a good idea when you you have when you are working on a, a surface that, that's been painted on and it's fairly impervious to more moisture perhaps I'm using that that fine spray and maybe leave it a minute or so leave it some time for it to sort of soak in and and do its stuff before going in with some paint I've perhaps been a little bit too impatient here with um, with my application of the paint after misting now it's going to go lighter again so it appears quite savage the the dark color here use the mister again just to keep things moving get a softer edge so you can see that maybe a little bit closer to the paper there perhaps some um, a few centimeters maybe four or five centimeters above the surface
This is a bit more watery now, not as thick as I, I had beforehand for these uh, reflections that are near us. So I'm having a little bit of fun here with the other lines defining the the texture of the surface of the of the harbour bed and um, best best done I think with a with a brush like this uh, a mop brush with a good with a good point. So I'm using as I said I'm using this uh, squirrel mop use my fingers just to blend the paint in a bit and you can see it's still there's a little bit of glare can you see um, in the in those reflections there so it's the mister has done its done its job with a paper towel lift out a little bit of that paint because it's so moist I'm not going to get a hard edge around that lifting and it's still going to blend in a little bit if I'm patient and leave it I've changed now to a smaller brush. This is a synthetic round brush and I've wetted it and then squeezed out all the water so it's quite dry but not totally dry if you see what I mean and carefully if I can have a few more lines little there are if you look back at the photograph there are some lighter streaks going across this dark reflection so I'm trying to replicate that with with those marks there I've just spotted that the reflections underneath the hole need to be a little bit higher than I did them first of all they were too low Check my edge on this brush, keep going, careful line. I don't want these uh, lines to be equally spaced as well so um, fairly a lot of different um, distances between those lines this I call my detail brush because it's great now to while the reflections are drying go back into the background and give the impression of a few windows not too dark in color and not too many of them just just a few different sizes perhaps a few lines there at the edge of the roof now that far boat I'll add in the hull and maybe a little bit of a 
a dark, well, it won't be a shadow, but um, just something to seat it on the, on the bed so it's not sort of floating in, in midair, just a little bit of um, darkness underneath the hull. This is the cabin door. And then a few lines of trim going up the side of the boat. Tiny bit of shadow underneath the three fenders. And then with a bit of clear water, give it a soft edge. I've covered up that white line. It was too bright. It needs to be dulled, dulled down, if that's the right word. Dulled down a little bit. Now over to the right hand boat, little doorway to the cabin, I'll need to add some lines down the side of the boat as well. This is almost a horizontal line here, a lot easier than the other boat. Not too precise, the ladder at the back a bit of lost and found continue on to the buildings on the right a few I need to get a few verticals in with this which um, you know the mass will be an important stage they'll just suddenly make these boats appear a little bit more convincing. My palette, because I've very rarely clean it out, it's, it's a, I've, a, I've got an accumulation of, I don't know what um, color in the little corners of the mixing wells there. Um, I'm more interested in the values at this stage, not necessarily what color they are. And th this brush is quite good at sort of lifting out um, into the uh, dark recesses of those of those uh, corners, uh, whatever was there. Oh yes, I need to uh, get in the these um, keels. underneath that second boat, join them with the reflections. You might be able to notice that the reflections are drawing a little bit lighter now. On this harbour bed, there are some darker areas, bits of seaweed and um, maybe little stones and things. So I'm just going in with my same detail brush here. Quite thick paint, not too much water on the brush.
And these could be reflections of the rigging and masts and so on. Does need to be a few strong verticals. I always think paintings look quite nice when there's a strong horizontal and or a strong vertical. I think that's from a design point of view quite nice. Um, I don't know whether I was mucking about with a possibility of a fourth boat in there, but I'll leave it up to the viewer to decide right there in the middle whether there was something. Dark line up to that hull, so that gives a bit more definition to the uh, the boat on the right hand side. Want to just go go up and that dark line meeting a meeting a lighter area. This can be my my seaweed now. There a little bit uh, accumulation of seaweed in the bottom left corner. Don't want too much in the middle because it's quite light and uh, I think it looks nicer not to cover that up too much with any complex crisscrossing of lines. So I'm trying to be conscious not to destroy that. few details on the tops of the boats. When you look more closely at the boats, you can see little marks here and there and railings and bits of rigging. They just, uh, within reason, I don't want to go overboard with the detail. Um, just adding those little, little bits and pieces with a smaller brush. Now this is the sail that's been folded up. You'll have to excuse me, I'm not I'm not a yacht, I'm not a nautical person, so I don't know these nautical terms. Is that the boom? Is it the boom, uh, maybe, and the mast? Um, so it's a sort of like an L shape in a way. Um, quite attractive, I think from a composition point of view, quite attractive to have that, um, that sort of shape there. And I was conscious when I was doing the background buildings not to conflict with that shape you know have it sort of, sort of splitting it in half I wanted to either have it exposed or partly covered with that background it's quite important to get in the rigging and the lines here which are emphasizing those initial brush marks I put in when I was doing the wash. Careful lines as straight as I can. And then that strong diagonal across the middle. Now these are these are chains, so I'm going to have to um, adopt a different sort of brush mark there. Do you see just sort of stabbing the paper um, as I'm coming down to try and give the impression of these heavy chains going across the surface? And the paint's quite. This is quite dry, this, um, this brush now. It's not, not too much water on it. Almost taking the paint um, neat off the palette, not too much water in it. You can see in that middle well, it's not too much water in there now. It's almost drying up. 
there is a line just lower down on that hull. I guess almost um, where the water, where the water edge might be when it's floating. On my palette, I've got some white gouache paint that I, I, uh, I've got as a little blob of white paint there that's um, has been there several weeks, and uh, or several months actually, um, and it gives you sometimes quite a nice sort of greyish colour, um, which is very useful for these these masks. So fairly thick. I'm not sure if I've gone a little bit too thick for that mast, the diameter of the mast, but anyway, I've done it now. And then continue on with some side rigging. Now, repeat the process. You'll see with the, the mast on the, on the boat, the second boat, I did actually leave a little gap there, which, uh, it just sort of happened really and uh, I just sort of went with it. Um, again, the, the boom on, on that boat. And I've just noticed it sort of, that angle of that boom, it just, again, helps. It's sort of mirroring the angles across the harbour bed. It just hopefully just aids the viewer looking in and draws us in. Now a few lost and found faint rigging lines. You could do this with a rigger brush or a dagger brush, something like a fine detail type brush. I, I prefer just to keep keep going with this smaller brush I've got. And those reflections after using the, uh, the Nano Mister They've gone quite, quite light now. Uh, quite happy with um, the way they've appeared in this little test drive. Probably not the way I would have done it. I would have preferred to get in, do the reflections first, and then paint the hull of the boat second. And then as I come down to meet the reflections, it one's going to bleed into the other, so, get, so I get a nice... Um, no, no hard um, transformation of one, one area to the other. Now, white paint here, I use sparingly. I do use it quite a lot at the end of a painting. I think this, this one needs it just to pick up on a few bits of rigging. I particularly like using it against a darker background. So uh, the, the, the darker background of the buildings, for example, um, the where a, a bit of rigging might go over the dark hull that would be a, another chance to use it lost and found not continuous lines a few railings at the front of the boat as well back of the boat I don't want to don't want to overdo it too much at this stage because it's pretty much there. Probably didn't need to do that, but uh, just pick up a bit of glistening of um, the tops of the chain. Maybe it's it's damp and it's catching a little bit of light. So um, could have done some some sort of curved marks to to really emphasise the fact of a of a chain uh, catching the tops of the. Um, 
the rings of the chain. So I'm going to dry things here as I want to rub out um, some of the pencil marks that are showing through on the tops of the holes. Just notice a few more bits of rigging securing that, that um, mast and the boom. If there's any yachtsmen out there, they can correct my terminology, please. And now with a, a rubber eraser, just remove the line so it looks a little bit fresher. There may be in places, if you if you're to look closely, maybe some of the pencil lines show through some of the washes, but I don't really mind that, to be honest with you. Um, but certainly those those whiter as I do want to uh, keep nice and clean. And here is my finished painting. Simple scene, harbour scene in Ilfracombe. An opportunity for me to try out this new nano mister as a fine mister spray, as opposed to using a, the uh, my more traditional spray bottle. Uh, using the um, the spray to get in that those soft edges of the reflections of the yachts. So, in summary, I, I probably would use use this. Um, again, where I want to try and keep the paper wet. So it's damp already when I want to keep it wet. Probably not the best way in which I did it to spray on top of dry paper. Also, I wouldn't use it outdoors. It's so fine, um, incredibly fine. I think the actual manufacturers, they say you've got to use distilled water in it because if there's any minerals in the water or if you're using hard water straight out of the tap, it could potentially clog up. I'm not sure what the technology is, but um, it, it is a very fine spray. And try and keep it close to the surface. If, you, if you're if you using it uh, too far away from the surface, the you'll get little globules of water forming and uh, you want to be sort of quite, uh, just moist the paper with, with a, as fine a spray as possible. Now, if you want to have a go at painting scenes, um, painting a lot of uh, scenes that, that I paint, why not uh, join my Patreon uh, club? If you go up to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T, every month I set a painting project for my members based on a video that I've created, and then you paint that scene, you submit your photo you, you take a photograph of your painting, submit it to me by email, and I will give you a video critique back in return. Um, so a nice way of you improving your watercolour technique and getting a little bit of coaching from me um, with some extra hints and tips there. So take a look at my Patreon site, patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. be great to uh, have you on board and joining the club there. You can also um, submit your own photos for for scrutiny with the other members. And also, uh, thirdly, I do run a Q&A session online on a regular basis where people can, if they've got anything on their mind as regards watercolour, want to ask me questions, review um, current projects, then it's a nice sort of way of interacting with each other. So more details go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. But thanks very much for watching. Catch up with you on the next video.